Welcome to Level Up, where you get the score on video games. We're now 30-something episodes into this podcast, and so far I've touched on some pretty big names in the video game world. There's been Sonic, Mario, Pokemon, and even Spyro the Dragon. But there's one series I've avoided talking about until now, The Legend of Zelda. With how much people love this series, why haven't I talked about any of the games? Simply put, I'm not a fan. Now, before you all hit that unsubscribe button, let me explain. I don't hate The Legend of Zelda, I just think it's overrated. Let me show you what I mean with The Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hour glass for the Nintendo DS. The story for this Zelda title follows directly after the events of Wind Waker. This is one of those rare times that a Zelda game is easily put on the Zelda timeline, but once you play it all the way through, you learn it's a throwaway game, so it could be placed anywhere, really. Anyways, still adventuring on the Great Sea, Link and Tetra, this game Zelda, come across a ghost ship. Tetra jumps right on board. Though this seems stupid, I do like Tetra over the sit-and-do-nothing Zeldas from the past. Hearing her scream for help, Link tries to jump after her, but then falls short and unconscious. Instead of drowning in the water, Link wakes up to a goddamn fairy, making me wish he did drown. Anyway, he finds out he's lost his ship, all his items are gone, and he's washed up on a strange new island. So he has to start adventuring all over again to save Tetra. And that's pretty much all you need to know to start off. The rest you piece together as you go along as usual. Since this game follows directly after Wind Waker, they also use the same look which was annoying mistake number two. The first annoying mistake being... See, when Wind Waker was first announced, people made ass fun of the way it looked and continue to do so today. So why, in hindsight, would you make another game that looks like it, especially with a throwaway game? The vibrant colors aren't my issue, except for the fact that the water looks like a big tarp, but I found that the people look creepy. Also, since the DS can't quite handle the GameCube's graphics, downgrading them caused some problems as usual. One thing I noticed was these gray lines that appeared sometimes when one object covers another. Since this game has an overhead view most of the time, being nitpicky about the 3D graphics might be a little petty. But know what? This is my review, and it did bug me. Annoying mistake number three are the controls. Since this is the DS, they had the ability to make the entire game playable with the stylus. So that's what they did, and gave you no other option. To attack, you tap on an enemy. To walk around, you move the stylus. To talk to people, you tap on them, etc. This wouldn't be that big of a complaint, except that it's totally unnecessary, and I don't have the option to turn it off. But this is a Zelda game, and what really counts is the exploring. Overworld adventuring is tedious, since once again, you're on a ship traveling the ocean. You draw a line on your map and watch it go. But you can't just leave it because you might get attacked by enemies, which makes a whole sailing experience annoying mistake number four. The dungeons are pretty good though, if not a little easy, but that's nothing really to complain about. Annoying mistake number 5 comes from the temple which you find the phantom hourglass, because you can't just visit it once. You have to do it over and over and over again. Each time you get more sand in your hourglass to go further and your new items help you to do that, but literally having to do the same stuff again and again like that was irritating. <laughs> I'm not gonna say this game is a bad one, but it's annoying to say the least, with five big reasons. It comes off as painfully average, which is what I'm trying to say. Sure, this is no Ocarina of Time, Link to the Past, or Link's Awakening, but few in the Zelda series are. What I'm getting at is, maybe The Legend of Zelda isn't that great as a series but some of the individual games are. As for this one, it's annoying and obviously marketed towards more casual players, but it has its moments of charm and some okay dungeons. It pretty much comes off as a very basic Zelda game. I give The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass 6.5 levels out of 10. I'm Leo Melanson, and now you know the score. <laughs>